as international medical graduate, one of the most crucial thing is your ability to find a correct job. However, unfortunately, we don't get any education, any mentorship and any guidance in terms of making the CV, targeting the specific application form questions and also finally, the most important, the interview preparation, which are like mini OSCE exams. Now, IMGs have had another strong year in 2023 getting jobs here in Australia. And likely the trend will continue in 2024. With the new migration rule, doctors are comfortably maintained in a high skills occupation list and so will likely to continue to migrate to get hospital sponsored visa. So what are the 10 things that can guarantee you a short listing for a medical job interview and finally your dream job offer here in Australia in 2024? Let the truth be told and I'll also tell you the five professional mistakes to avoid when you're applying for medical jobs here in Australia. Number one, six months of emergency department experience. You must complete your internship and then do six months of emergency medicine experience. And there are two main reasons for that. Number one, there are a large number of RMO jobs in Australian emergency departments and employers over here prefer doctors with resuscitation and procedural skills, which ED doctors will have most likely. Plus, Whilst working in emergency, you also have a diverse experience of seeing and managing a variety of problems and conditions. So even for medical and surgical RMO jobs in hospital, you will be the preferred candidate. And they're far easier to get after an emergency experience. Number two, essential licensing exams. Make sure that you have passed your AMC one and ideally even AMC clinical exam. There are two benefits in passing AMC clinical. First, by passing AMC clinical, Many hospitals in Australia will shortlist you as a matter of preference for a job interview. Secondly, you have just lifted up your credentials amongst the top 30% of the doctors looking for their first job in Australia. Number three, recency of practice. If you have a gap in your clinical practice, I would say for more than 12 months, you need to do three months of recency in emergency department or journal RMO job in any hospital. Remember, even though 12 months gap is small, but Hospitals do not feel comfortable offering jobs to people for large clinical gaps of more than six months. Now, registration requirements of recency are a bit more relaxed, but remember, there is no registration until you get a job offer. Number four, do life support courses, BLS, ALS, and they must be mentioned on your CV that it's done in the last two years from a recognized body in your own country. Any other courses like procedural skills courses or communication courses will further strengthen your CV, showing that you're committed to your CPD activities. Number five, application form responses and CV. This is perhaps the most important thing. The application and CV needs to be targeted towards the specific job description. Most JMO jobs have similar job descriptions and likely a well-written CV will be good for most jobs. The application forms also, the questions need to be modified with the examples from your own clinical experience. I get people sending me their CVs for preparation for a job interview when they're shortlisted. And I can see for a fact that all the CV that have been shortlisted for an Australian job interview are brief, are to the point and yet comprehensive. And it appears that the doctors have put a great effort in their CVs. Number six, apply smartly, not in volume. As a junior doctor, you must apply for every job that you can find. It's free, but you must make sure that the job fulfills your skill set and experience. And I can understand that it can be initially a bit confusing at a time that which job to apply for, does it match my skill set? But I think you'll get to know the process once you're in the process. The job applications in Australia are advertised in the first recruitment round in May to July and the second round from August to October. So target these major recruitment rounds when they're one year of journal RMO rotation, journal surgical rotation and emergency jobs are advertised. With utmost dedication and hard work towards these two recruitment campaigns, also be smart applier. There are certain hospitals that are IMG friendly and certainly you have strong chance of getting your first job in these hospitals. Hospitals in some regional and rural New South Wales, hospitals in Victoria in regional and rural Victoria, Hospitals in South Australia are very IMG friendly and also certain private hospital and public hospital in regional and rural Queensland. However, be mindful 
there are jobs available all year round. Join a complete career guidance package where we'll specifically help you target these jobs. Clinical observation. Now in Australia, I've seen almost all doctors doing clinical observations in a hospital or a GP setting being preferred for shortlisting. Now, the employers feel that these junior doctors have shown their efforts in learning the local health system. Now, obviously, it has, you know, shown them that this doctor must have reasonable communication skills to be able to observe or at least see that interaction between the doctor and the patient. Number eight, have one research or audit experience. Now, you might say that, look, I don't have that and where did it become an essential criteria? It's not. It's one of those desirable criteria. Why? Because Australian medical jobs are getting competitive. And recently, I've seen more CVs shortlisted for excellent jobs in major cities like Sydney and Melbourne and Brisbane who have got research, poster presentation and audit. One thing I'd like to clarify, that you don't need a lengthy research or audit, but a small project conducted with three or four doctors and published in some reputable journal or presented at a large international conference would be ideal. That at junior doctor level, you actually got those skills to conduct a research or present an audit with a confidence and you've got great communication skills. Remember, it's always been an expectation in the US. You are not even likely to get your application shortlisted for US residency programs. And as the competition increases, the Australia is probably also moving towards that preference, at least for the competitive jobs. Interview performance. I have seen people getting multiple shortlisting but not getting job offers as they are unsuccessful in job interviews. The job interviews are like mini OSCE exam that must highlight your professional personality. And trust me, job offer after shortlisting can only happen if your interview performance is meeting the set response laid out in each and every question. Most job interviews have point-based system plus an overall communication and confidence level checking throughout the interview interaction with the panel. I am proud to say that I have helped 130 doctors getting job here in Australia in the last two years with my one-on-one -on -one interview session. So if you've got an interview lined up, and you're not feeling comfortable, you only need one interview session to help you prepare you for the medical recruitment campaign. So please invest your time and efforts in understanding the process. As I said, be smart. Last week, I had a doctor from Turkey and another from India who were both interviewed surgical RMO position in Sydney. Both of them managed to get the same job. How cool is that for me? Number 10, References. Most reference checks are done soon after the interview. Make sure your references are kept up to date. They are also able to provide you with an excellent reference. This is a big deal because this restores trust in your future employer that you have a good clinical performance in your last job and your previous employer are happy with your performance across all domains that are asked in structured references. This includes your patient assessment skills, communication skills, procedure skills, punctuality, work ethics and above all, teamwork and your dedication to work. Five common professional mistakes. Number one, large clinical career gaps. Not only they look bad on your CV, but also lower your chances of ever getting shortlisted for a job interview. Remember courses, academic research, appointment, masters, PhD, telemedicine are not the compensation for your clinical gaps for job purposes. If you have brief gaps like less than three months, make sure that you address them properly in your CV. Number two, no house job or internship. Internship is not an essential requirement for a job application, but please understand, competition is fierce for intern position as you are competing with Australian medical graduates, which is always going to be tough because they will be given preference over any IMGs for intern position. Number three, four page long, poorly written and structured CV. Now I've seen CV in which I am not able to get any idea about you know what the clinical experience is like what they have done in the job interview and it just portrays such a bad picture and those doctors when i've talked to them they're excellent they just prioritize their thing so badly on the cv that they have got no chance of getting shortlisted i can't even imagine what kind of application form responses they put so please try take an effort and modify your cv and application and if you can't do that please take some professional help also take help in interview coaching. You may think that your CV is excellent, but there's no harm in having it professionally reviewed. We provide service for application and interviews and CVs modification. Please do a medical professional service. After all, it's your fundamental key to getting shortlisted. And as I said, interviews are like mini OSCE exam and preparation and planning is 
absolutely must. Number four, not applying jobs regularly. You must target at least 20 to 30 jobs every month for your first job in any competitive market that is UK, US or even Australia. No CPD activity. Now, 50 hours of CPD activity is an essential requirement both by the Medical Board of Australia and also some of the rules for shortlisting for jobs here in Australian market. Please know that CPD activities like courses, training sessions are not a compensation for your clinical recency requirements. 2024 is perhaps the best year to get your first medical job as a junior doctor in Australia. I normally ask IMGs to develop a personalized professional development plan, which is leading to a job. And let's target things over six months. The three months is your recency and improving your job and polishing your CV, application form responses, and CPD requirements. And the next three months for application, targeting recruitment campaigns, individual jobs. This is a far efficient way of moving things that by the end of the six months, I should either be getting shortlisted or should be having a job offer. Remember, as medical students, we are not provided any training or teaching about jobs, CVs, and interviews. And the mentorship in this area is seriously lacking. Remember, it's your career and your step in the right direction with good planning and preparation will set you up for the rest of your professional life. If you're confused and need any help, please email me info at emergencyfocus.net or simply join Complete Career Guidance Package where I, along with my team, will help you make and modify your CV, application form responses, and help you prepare for an interview. Look after yourself and each other and have a bright future ahead. Thank you and goodbye.